Hi everyone, this is Andy Lasavita, founder of MileWalk and the MileWalk Academy and award-winning author of The Hiring Prophecies here with this week's episode of Tips for Work and Life. I got a great one to help you succeed in your careers. It's all about getting your resume noticed and how to get it noticed in five seconds guaranteed. Now, this topic is so hot that I decided to wear my hot salmon colored top. So if you're watching me on the podcast, hop over to my blog or hop over to YouTube just so I can brighten your day. But it is that hot. It's really, really important that you get your resume noticed quickly. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how do you get the resume noticed? What's actually happening when someone opens your resume? So how do they look at it? How can you make sure that you're getting on top of them right away so that they recognize this as something that they want to continue reading? And the third thing we're going to talk about is what not to do. So just by way of background and just so you understand how many resumes I've actually looked at in my life. In my career, I have looked at more than a half a million resumes. I'm not kidding. And how, how could something like that happen? Well, for decades, I have been recruiting and interviewing and hiring people at a high velocity. Throw in, uh, or maybe a not so thanks to a great recession, that thanks to that great recession a number of years back, I spent four entire years looking at about 1,500 to 2,000 resumes a week. And then we also have some great relationships with outplacement organizations that help large organizations facilitate the exit of individuals. So whenever they go in a reduction in force, for one of their clients goes in a reduction in force, they send us resumes by the thousands, hoping we might be able to help them. So I do look at an awful lot of resumes. And in one of my earlier posts titled, How to Build the Ultimate Professional Resume, I gave you what I thought was the ideal layout for your resume, whether you're a professional or a college student. But let's talk today about how do you make sure that that resume gets noticed right away. So you already understand how I've looked at so many resumes. Now I want to talk to you about how long you have. You've got about six seconds. That's from my personal experience looking at all of those resumes. That's about how long it takes me to look at the entire resume and determine if I want to look at it. And if you don't want to take my word for it, there are many job sites like The Ladders and Monster and others that year after year they interview or they survey their recruiters or the people that are or the hire, hirers and employers that are using their site. They ask them, how long does it take you to analyze a resume? Six seconds is the number, which means you have five seconds to interrupt that person to make sure that you get their attention and that they're noticing what you have. So that's how long you have. Now, how do you... How, how does somebody like me actually look at a resume? So what's actually happening in that six seconds? Well, first thing that I do, and assuming for the most part that somebody is gonna be opening your resume via email or a career portal or something of that nature, up is gonna come the resume. The first place my eyes go, so my first eye glance, is at the top. I'm looking at the top center. I'm looking for your name. I don't need to see a whole lot of other stuff. I'd like to see your address because I'd like to know where you live, but I don't need to see a whole bunch of letters and other hieroglyphics after your name that's just going to prohibit my ability to remember it. The next thing that I do is I look all at once at the top half of the first page of what should be a no longer than two page resume, but I look at the top half, the whole top half. I look at it all at once and I'm looking for something in particular that I'll talk about in a couple of moments. But I look at the top half of the first page. I don't read it, I don't read it no matter what it says, I just look at it. Then what I do is I go down the left column and I start to look for which organizations or which companies you've worked for. I care way more about the companies you worked for than the particular positions that you've held within them. I want, I want to look for Super Bowlers, people that have played on a Super Bowl team, that have got good pedigree, that have been well trained. I care more about the company. But if I have to look for it, that frustrates me. So, so I, go down, I go down the left column. Then what I do is I, I go to the next page and I look at the entire second page all at once only to let my, myself know, or I'm, I'm really looking for just what's on the page. You know, is it, is it a little more work history? Is it your education? Is it your volunteer uh, programs or activities or other credentials or, or things that you, the boards you sit on, whatever it might be. That's what I do. So I look at the name at the top. I look at the top half of the resume all at once. 
Then I go down the left column, I look for the organizations, and then I look at the whole second page all at once. And I don't look, beyond that, I won't look. If you have a third page, it's just gonna upset me. It frustrates me because you don't respect my time. That's, that's actually how, how I feel. So now that you understand how I, look at the, how I look at the resume, now all of that took me about six seconds. It really took me about six seconds. If the resume is shorter, it might even take me less time. That's all it takes. Now I have to decide what am I gonna do? So based on what information you have there will tell me whether or not I wanna read more. So when I think about when I think about what, you know, why did you open this blog post? It's probably one of two reasons. You either know me and love me and said, oh my God, Andy's got another great post or, or article or video or whatever, I'm gonna have to click it just because I wanna read everything he writes. Or more likely, you have no idea who I am and you're thinking, based on the headline, wow, this dude is promising me resume glory in five seconds, I'm gonna check it out. So there was a headline that got your attention, that caused you to click, that caused you to get here. Your resume, assume that you have to do the same thing with your resume. So where does the headline go? At the top of the front page. It's the first thing that they're gonna see. So you need to, in, in a few seconds, entice them to wanna read more. So that's the real estate that's the most prime. You've gotta show them how you add value, how you can add value to their life, how you can add value to their company, where it is that you've been, what it is that you've done, all at the top. Easiest way to do that is just like I instructed in how to build the ultimate professional resume. And if you wanna look at that, it's in the notes, but I tell you exactly what you have to put up there. Two great things, a career profile that in aggregate shows your entire career in a paragraph or two. And the second thing is your career highlights. What value you've contributed and how an organization, a customer base, or somebody of people or groups has improved because of what you've done. Now I'm not gonna go into all the details. The important message that I want you to understand is at the top, the top half of the front page, that's where you put the career profile and the career highlights. I promise you that if, you, if done well and if you do them in accordance with how I instructed in how to build the ultimate professional resume, you'll have the right language, they'll be enticed. And what that will do is it will help you share with them immediately who you are, you'll, you'll give them a picture of you in their mind, and you'll avoid some things I don't want you to do. So there are three really big don'ts. You know, as I mentioned, this is the most prime real estate that you have to entice the employer to keep reading. Do not, under any circumstances, put an objective statement. An objective statement is what you want, not what you offer. So don't waste any of your prime real estate on the resume and those few precious seconds that you have telling them what you want. Tell them what you offer. The second thing that I see a lot of people do that waste tons of real estate is putting a laundry list of skills. And, and first off, putting a laundry list of skills is bad, but if you put a laundry list of skills that are really, really generic, like leadership, project management, detail-oriented, hardworking, good communication skills, no one cares about those. That is your opinion of yourself. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're stating facts and evidence of why you are as awesome as you are. The, the, the person who's looking at the resume isn't gonna take your word for it. They wanna see some hard evidence, at least on paper, of what you bring to the table. Don't waste any of that upfront, uh, upfront area talking about these generic skills. If you have some really discreet skills that are really, really good, their certifications, their training programs, things of that nature, just put them at the bottom of your resume on the second page. It's a great spot for them. Just make sure that there's something really worth putting in and not these really generic labels that you can actually talk about in a more concrete fashion throughout the resume. The third thing, if you are a professional, and when I say professional, I mean you've been working for longer than 24 hours, don't put your education at the top. Put your education at the bottom. The moment you have your first job and you are working, you're now a pro. Take that education, move it to the bottom of the resume, wherever that might be, bottom of the first page, bottom of the second page, middle of the second page, doesn't matter. But put the, put the education there. Education is great, but we don't want you consuming the, the top portion of the resume, the, the most prime real estate with education, unless you are a college student. 
and I also talk about uh, collegiate resumes and all that good stuff. It's also in the body and in the notes. So I hope that really helps. You want to make sure, the moral of the story is, you want to make sure that you're taking the top half of the front of your resume and, and putting, in, putting in a career profile that's an aggregation of who you are and what you've done, as well as three major valuable contributions, the ones you're most proud of, up at the top. And like I said, I instruct, I instruct exactly how to do that and how to build the ultimate professional resume. A couple other quick things. If you really, really want more resume help, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be uh, doing an hour-long resume on how to write the perfect resume. And depending on when you're watching this or when you're seeing this, it might already be out. The second thing is, I've got a great job interviewing webinar. It's free. It's live. This, this job, webcast, job interviewing webcast is called Three Keys to Ace Your Job Interview. It's fantastic. We've been running some sessions so far. That's in the notes on how to sign up. And lastly, if you enjoyed this, please share it or give me some comments on the blog or on the social, on the social feeds. Always love to hear from you. Until next time, have a good one.